these things. You are a mighty God. We bear your name. You have invested your glory in us. We pray, Lord God, that we would not fail you. But we need your strength to sustain us. And Lord, as we hear your word this morning, may we be prepared to listen and to put it into practice. To hear and obey that we might, Lord, receive your presence. We ask, Lord, you give us a fresh vision of Jesus that we might love him as we ought to do. How glorious he is. So far beyond our attitudes and mindset, it seems impossible sometimes, Lord God. And yet you have declared that your purpose is to transform us, me, into his likeness. What a glorious work it is, Lord, and how inconceivable. But, Lord God, you have declared what you have started, you will bring to conclusion. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. You are a deposit. You guarantee that which is to come. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, our God. And bless us, Lord, not because of who we are, but because of who you are. Bless us with the certainty and the assurance of your love for us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let us pray together the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. John 14, verses 6 to 7, said, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Let us pray. Heavenly <clears throat> Father, you have called us to be still before you, to rest in your love and to patiently bear the cross that you have set before us, knowing that you are not only at our side, but deep, deeply at the deepest recesses of our hearts. Help us to depend totally upon you in all things, knowing that moments of sadness will soon turn into moments of, of joy <coughs> when you are by our side. Keep us from fretful thoughts, knowing that you are our best and heavenly Father, our best friend, our shepherd, our provider, our defender, and the rock upon which I walk. Draw us, we pray, Lord, ever closer to you. Control our spirit and our soul and instill in 
ginawa ko na din yung perfect peace para sa pasisora ng Spanish and help us to pray. To be still and know that you are God, our God, in whom we put trust. For what we have received, Lord, Step is that he shows us that he 
even though we are forgiven, we still have sin in the flesh. And we have to recognize that we ourselves are powerless to overcome when we are tempted by sin that is so rooted in our human nature. When we humble ourselves to acknowledge this truth about ourselves, then the Holy Spirit fills us, enlightening us, leading us, and giving us the strength and the power that we lack in ourselves so that we can keep all that God commands us. We can give up our own will and instead do His will. In other words, we can be victorious over the lusts of the flesh, which lead to sin. In John 1, 5, verse 20, we read this. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true by being in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Transformation. This is the whole point of the truth. There is no greater blessing than to walk in the truth. This means to acknowledge it, to judge that which it shows us, to hate that which is found to be seen, and then to proceed to death by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we are in constant development, constant progress, continuous sanctification, and continuous transformation in the image of our Lord Jesus. It is possible for all of us here to walk in His truth so that it can set us free from sin, both the consequences of it and its power over us. In John 8, Verse 32, we read, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. God loves us, and He loves to show mercy to everyone who calls upon Him. The Holy Spirit, also known as the Spirit of Truth, will guide us in this ongoing process of being set free from sin. The more willing, obedient, and quick to acknowledge the, the truth we are, the quicker our progress will be. And what will the progress Corinthians 3 verse 18 we read this and we who with unveiled faces and reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit when we judge ourselves by faith we put to death whatever the truth has shown us about ourselves. Then, by faith, we are transformed into the image of His glory. This is why transformation 
dimension is the more glory God talks. The more important part of God's gospel to us can be described in this one word, transformation. God's greatest longing for us is that we can be transformed from our sinful human nature pattern and partake of his glorious, perfect, divine nature. This means that our very nature, our very thoughts and inclinations can be transformed. We can go from absolute sinful wretches perfect that we God's glory and peace. There is no greater gift that exists in all creation. This is what we read in 2 Peter 1 verse 4. Through this he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. What is the way to the true Creator? Transformation to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ comes at the cost. Attaining the divine nature requires the sacrifice of my, of my old nature. That is why Jesus says in Matthew 7 verse 14, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and not a knowledge to find it. Because there are so few that are willing to give up their own it is impossible to begin this life pro lifelong process of transformation without first acknowledging that my human nature is worthless, it's awful, it's stained by sin. I have to have that cry in my heart as in Romans 7 verse 34. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? I have to feel the pain and the deficiency that come by realizing that I cannot serve my God in the condition I am. My nature can't even be improved let alone transform. I have to become a brand new creation. And when I have become saturated with the poverty of spirit, when I have recognized and accepted that nothing good dwells in me, then I am ready to start trading my old sinful nature with a new one. Then I am ready to begin on the way to start my life of transformation. And God will guide me through this way. Transformation comes bit by bit by putting my old sinful nature to death in my diverse situation that I find myself during the day, I see that my impatience, my envious character, my anger, my selfishness, my lust, and my pride show themselves in me. My self-esteem will testify to that. My by denying those thoughts, and refusing to let the pattern grow, I pray to God to enable me to put them to death. So when a 
the scene to talk comes up, for example, when we said that there is a feeling of envy in us, then we can refuse to accept it, refuse to let it grow. Envious souls are as different from both nature as is the night from the day. He said, no less than a miracle. To be transformed from such simple thoughts to divine, to a divine nature. We should cry out to God to save us from our sins. And we should pray that He will give us the strength to put it to death. We should pray that He Let us understand that the process of transformation is beyond our human capability. And the Holy Spirit gives us that power <coughs> to put the sinful nature to death for good. And when it is dead, God gives us a tiny piece of divine nature to put it to death. We go through fire and yet purify it. Even in that seemingly insignificant situation, we partake of those most precious properties and partake of the divine nature and therefore join God is performing a miracle in us. What an incentive to be afraid of him. In 1 Peter 1, verse 6, 7, we read this. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have had some of grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater more than gold which perishes even, even though refined by fire, may be proven genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The truth itself creates hope. There is no reason to even be discouraged when we see the truth about ourselves, no matter what we see. Instead, we can be filled with hope because we know that the spirit of truth is also the spirit of power. And through him, we are able to overcome all things that stand between us and our goal to become like our Lord Jesus Christ. And those things that the truth shows us about ourselves can disappear from our lives altogether. In 1 John 3, verse 3, Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. We need to love and acknowledge the truth as it stands. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. We can only be saved and sanctified to the same degree that we love the truth. So let's welcome it with open heart, even when it hurts. When we see and acknowledge we are what we are really like by nature. Without first seeing it, The outcome will be glorious when 
the truth to be liberated by and safe. Let us have courage and look all divine truth straight in the eye, fully confident that he who in his love shows us the truth about our Thank you.